The Tico Line Streetcar System celebrated its 10-year anniversary October 20th, marking an important moment when a grassroots effort successfully brought back a streetcar system that was once part of Tampa's history and economy for more than 50 years. One of the things that uh, was important about the streetcar is the reach of it. It had 56 miles worth of track, which means you could go from where my parents lived in West Tampa, my grandparents lived, and my great-grandparents. You could go from there all the way to Ballast Point, uh, as far north as Sulphur Springs and the pool up there. Uh, you could pretty much go anywhere in the city of Tampa. It was really the main way in which they traveled. Now, of course, they all had vehicles, but usually just one vehicle for the entire family. It was truly a, uh, a community system that got people around, and it was, um, it was important because without that, the city of Tampa, in conjunction with the former city of West Tampa, could not grow together. Tampa City Councilman Mike Suarez sits on today's streetcar board of directors, but as a third generation Tampa resident, appreciates the history and contributions of Tampa's first system, which rolled to a stop after World War II in 1946. It would be another 50 years before the streetcar would come back to Tampa. If you look at Tampa's map, you can see exactly where uh, the city developed is right along those uh, those uh, transit lines, those uh, trolley lines, Tampa Heights, West Tampa, uh, South Tampa and Ballast Point area, Sulphur Springs area where they used to have the pool and they, that's where people used to, we still have a pool there too. Uh, it was a place where we knew where recreation was at, we knew where the economic uh, uh, center of downtown, of uh, the t city was, was in downtown Tampa and people lived in what, you know, was quote unquote the suburbs. Well, you know, the history of, of streetcar lines is interesting because it was privately owned by uh, Tico, okay, we, and we've named them Tico uh, Streetcar Line sort of as a homage to uh, the, the history of it. But Tico was, a, um, was doing it privately. In fact, in the 1890s, there were two competing companies trying to get the franchise to make sure that they could run uh, the streetcar. The reason why Tico ended up with is that they had excess electricity. They tried to figure out how do we make money with this excess electricity because there weren't enough customers to go around. So by selling essentially the electricity to the streetcar, charging people 10 cents a ride or 5 cents a ride, it made it much easier for them to then recoup the cost of producing the electricity. They did it for economic reasons. And the same thing with any other new streetcars that are out there, whether it's in Charlotte or in, uh, in, um, in uh, San Diego, they want to recoup by uh, having more development out there uh, to have uh, a better streetcar system, which means that it's going to be a better t city, which means it's going to bring more development, and hopefully we can do something that's similar. And what has happened over the past 10 years is that what used to be no development along the, the track has turned into lots of residential uh, areas, lots of other um, uh, businesses. Along the line, we are flourishing. If you look up and down uh, the Tico streetcar line, uh, you have uh, you have the aquarium, you have the history museum, you have the uh, St. Pete, uh, excuse me, Tampa Bay Times Forum, you have uh, the, the Waterside Hotel, and then in the Ybor side, you've got uh, the uh, Hilton Garden uh, Center, you've got Immigrant Park, which is the terminus for, this, uh, for the line, and it comes all the way through the center of, of Ybor City, and you can go to any number of different restaurants or entertainment venues that you want. Today's system is a 2.7 mile line with 11 stations connecting folks between Ybor City, Channelside and downtown Tampa. And in Ybor City, the stations are meant to look like historic train sheds. And the bases are clad with the historic brick pavers that were taken out of Ybor City streets for the installation of the rail. Wrought iron railings were used and the wood roofs are covered with slate shingles. Pavers around the stations are done in a historic octagonal pattern that is used throughout Ybor City.
Channel District stations feature stainless steel to reflect the sleek, industrial architecture that is dominant in the area. The system's streetcars are historic replicas of the types of cars that operated at the turn of the century, the Bernie and the Open Breezer. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to the streetcar. Happy birthday, dear streetcar. Happy birthday to you. Blow out the candles. Who's gonna blow out the candles for the streetcar? We did take a we did take a great tour that talked about the his, the history of the trolleys when it started, and the role that it's played here in uh, the Tampa Bay community. So I think it's great that today they're celebrating their 10th year anniversary and only charging 10 cents. And if you notice, uh, there's a lot of people riding the train today, the trolley today. It helps bring people from different parts of town, uh, people from downtown to Ebor, and it ties together Ebor, Channel Side, the Port District. And um, so yeah, I think, I think it's a great amenity for Tampa Bay area. Mm -hmm.